What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're here with some more NFL DFS picks and lineup advice for tonight's single game showdown slate. Monday Night Football, Green Bay Packers, Los Angeles Rams. I'm laughing because it is quite the Monday Night Football game. This does qualify as a football game, despite the low total and the two teams that are participating. And we're here to play a showdown slate. So welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy, single game million dollar winner. Had a nice little 50K hit last night on FanDuel in the Commanders and Giants showdown slate. Using all the strategies we always talk about in these videos, using the strategies from our strategy guide, and uh, got some great tips from a writer, Kent, who wrote the Sunday Night Daily plug, especially the Jahan Dotson play. So uh, really pumped about that. Let's try to continue that success tonight. What we normally do in these videos here uh, on these Mondays and Thursdays for Showdown Slates, we talk about the injuries that impact the slate. We talk about low-risk, high-risk lineup construction tips, general showdown strategies, everything you need to crush these showdown slates on FanDuel and DraftKings. So let's open DraftKings back up, and so let's start with the injuries, first and foremost. Aaron Jones left last week's game against Chicago early, uh, but did, ret did return briefly off the injury report this week. He is expected to be good to go, so let's assume a normal workload for him. Romeo Dobbs, who... Uh, was starting most of the year over Christian Watson, who was out of the lineup. Then those roles were reversed when Dobbs injured his ankle. I think it was against Detroit. And Christian Watson has been on fire ever since. Dobbs finally fully healthy, and he's going to return tonight. Now, while it's not completely similar to that Arizona Cardinals situation from a week or two ago, where in these videos we talked about Greg Dortch being back, playing that slot role without Rondell Moore. He barely played. And so we can use that as a lesson that when we see these wide receiver rotations, these wide receiver rooms get fully healthy, when we've never really seen these combination of players truly play together, it can sometimes be difficult to figure out rotations. However, given Alan Lazard's role in the run game, given Christian Watson's explosion and dominance over the last, second half of the season, it's hard to imagine their roles change too much. What we don't know is how Dobbs is going to fit in. Is he going to play over Randall Cobb? Is he going to play over Sammy Watkins? Likely. Or was he just playing for the first half of the season because they straight just they didn't they needed him with everybody else hurt? So it's hard to know. Dobbs is priced pretty ridiculously at 6800 on DraftKings. And we don't expect him to even eclipse 10% ownership in the largest contest. So it's not like anyone's really going to play him. He's a large field play only. But again, there's some uncertainty there into how this whole wide receiver room shakes out. Uh, moving on down, uh, John Walford is out. Not that it really matters. Baker Mayfield will get the start once again after that miraculous performance on 40 hours notice starting for the Rams, leading him to that game-winning victory over that game-winning drive over the Raiders. He's going to start again. Uh, ideally has more than seven plays in the playbook this time after getting a, another 10 days to digest the offensive system. Uh, so Mayfield, full snaps, no uh, no trickery there. Let's keep on scrolling down. And really, that's it. There's really no other injuries to speak of that are going to impact this showdown slate. Aaron Donald remains out. So that, that obviously helps the Green Bay offense, helps the Green Bay run game. Uh, but other than that, we have the normal cast of characters playing in tonight's showdown slate, which means for the Rams, that's Van Jefferson, that's Ben Skoranek. Where is he? Down here, Ben Skoranek. Tutu Atwell, Brandon Powell, a real NFL roster. Those are the starting receivers for the Rams tonight. So let's talk about low-risk lineup construction. 50-50s, double-ups, head-to-heads. Just have to beat half the field to double your money. And what we normally try to do, we try to lock up all the scoring by playing quarterbacks and running backs. That way, if, if there's a touchdown scored in the game, you're likely going to have it. Or, especially in recent weeks and years, playing the mispriced players, playing their values, jamming them into your low-risk lineups. And uh, we can't really lock up all of the scoring tonight because we have split backfields. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon splitting work. Not 50-50, but they are splitting work. On the Rams side, we have Cam Akers, who is getting most of the early down work and playing more when the game is within a score or two. And then we see Kyron Williams coming in on passing downs and in trailing game scripts. So really can't decide on one of those guys for a low-risk lineup. They do make sense in high-risk contests where you build lineups around specific game scripts. But for low-risk, it's really difficult, right? So we could play Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones. And then after this, it gets tricky. 
However, I will say that Tutu Atwell is going to be one of the most popular players on the entire slate. Mispriced for his role, both on FanDuel and DraftKings. 4,400 on DraftKings. If we look just at his game log, we see nine targets last week, five targets the week before. So an average of seven targets per game since he's really turned into this full-time player. And over on FanDuel, it's kind of crazy. Tutu Atwell, just 6K on FanDuel. So extremely affordable and a great low-risk play over there too. And in fact, if we bring up the Occupy model, OccupyFantasy.com, our model ranks every player FanDuel and DraftKings based on our proprietary metrics, looks at over 100 different inputs to project player performance. We also have projected ownership in there. And if you sort by DraftKings flex ownership, Tutu Atwell is projected to be the third most popular player on DraftKings tonight. Goes to show how mispriced he truly is. So let's go back over to the DraftKings lineup page. And basically, based on that, we have to get Tutu Atwell into the lineup. 6K left per player. You probably want Green Bay kicker and or defense in your low-risk lineup based on the spread and the total. Let's see here. Packers are here. 8,800 left per player. You could fit Christian Watson, Cam Akers, Lazard. I think most people finish this off with Christian Watson. But this is probably the build to go for low-risk contests tonight because after the kickers and defenses, there aren't any slam-dunk value plays. Now, Brandon Powell is a decent play, mostly for high-risk contests. Only play, only ran seven routes last week. He was sick going into that game. That uh, route distribution between he and Tutu Atwell were much closer back in Week 13. But Tutu emerged a little bit. Uh, but again, don't be shocked if Powell plays more than or runs more than seven routes this time around, and that would make him a value of 2,200. But for low risk contests, he's not someone that we need to play. Now, FanDuel, obviously much trickier. Oh, this is the the winning lineup once again. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Baker Mayfield, 14K. I mean, he got lucky to get 14 FanDuel points last time out. They were basically shut down for three and a half quarters. And he should have been, right? But it's not like even with full weeks of practices, last week's game was the most fantasy points he scored since week one. And obviously a much better offensive system, but we can't expect too much. And at 15, at 14K, still pretty pricey for low-risk contests. I mean, you're going to want to play the kickers and defenses here too. Packers and Crosby, let's see what this does. 13-5 left per player. Like, can we just play five Packers? Is that a thing? Is that allowed? Uh I don't think you need to go to Tutu Atwell here on FanDuel and low risk. High risk, yes. Uh, however, if you want to get one more stud over Packers or over Crosby, you can and drop down the Tutu Atwell. Those are the two routes to go tonight. All right, let's talk about high risk contests now. Leagues, satellites, GPPs, exponential payouts. Got to beat a lot of people to get a lot of money. That's what I know a lot of you are here for. Now, before we get into this, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you are already. Get notified when we go live, upload these videos. Lots of weird scheduling with the NFL this week. Christmas has a full slate. Our Christmas Eve has a full slate. Three gamer on Christmas. Way different schedule than previous week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Get notified when we publish all these videos this week for NFL. Uh, and again, as I say most of the time, because we're doing multiple videos per day, sometimes the YouTube algorithm doesn't necessarily push these videos to you, even if you like them and watch them in the past. But the best way to see them again is to make sure you subscribe. So make sure you do that uh, once you uh, finish this video. All right. Um, High risk. Now, a majority of the captain ownership, shockingly, is going to be on the favored Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones. Let's go back to the Occupy model. And we sort by captain ownership. We see Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, nearly 50% combined captain ownership. Throw in Christian Watson, 11%. Now we're talking 55 60% of the captain ownership on Green Bay. Lazard's in there as well. So to me... We look at this game and we see a seven and a half point favorite. Everyone wants to play the Packers. Have the Packers been great this year? No. Have they disappointed in many spots? Yes. So for me, I think it's a perfect slate for the underdog macro, as we as we affectionately call it here at Occupy Fantasy. Talk about it in the showdown guide as well. That link is in the description. But basically, when you have a game where the field is playing everyone from one team, and most projections are going to push it towards a Green Bay heavy lineup, Really playing Rams heavy lineups or even balanced lineups to an extent are going to be way different than what the field is building. So as I talked about in the low risk and even alluded to on FanDuel, can we play five uh, Green Bay Packers players over there? 
the field is going to want to play as many Packers as they can. Kickers, defenses, pass catchers, quarterbacks, running backs. And what they're going to do is they're going to play lineups like this. Let's get, uh, I don't know. Let's get Crosby. We'll get Christian Watson. Uh, okay. And then they'll fit in Skoranek, who is cheap, had the big game last week, last time out, 15 DraftKings points. They'll play 2-2 at well. They'll play one to two of these mid-price guys, like something like this, right? So many lineups are going to start this way. Instead, if in the largest contest especially, build rules that say, I want at least three Rams in every lineup. Play Rams players at the captain spot. If the Rams keep this competitive or the scoring is concentrated on the Green Bay side, you have a massive edge over the field, which is what we need when we're competing against tens if not hundreds of thousands of people. Now, smaller contests, we don't need to get that crazy, but you still want to play lower-owned players. Just just be cognizant of who is popular and who is not. So instead of playing 2-2 Atwell, maybe we play Brandon Powell. Talked about that. Maybe instead of Skoranek, we pay up for Van Jefferson, their actual number one wide receiver. Uh, Instead of playing... I don't know. Aaron Jones still has the ankle injury. I know he's off the injury report, but maybe we play A.J. Dillon instead. So lots of ways to get different. And then if you go over to FanDuel, uh, I do want to show you the FanDuel. Let's go back to the model really quickly. FanDuel MVP, 42% Rodgers, 32% Aaron Jones, 75% of lineups are in two players on Green Bay side. Now, this is not expected to be a high-scoring game whatsoever, a total of 39 points. We almost saw this, in fact, I think we did see it, in that Chicago-Washington game earlier in the season. The game was like, I don't know, 17 to 10 or something along those lines. And Dante Pettis was the optimal MVP. Like, that's how crazy, when lower scoring games happen, we get some really weird optimal MVPs. So I think for 150 maxim, oops, I keep going back to this lineup, I'm trying to tell you, tell me something. So really playing the Rams receivers at MVP is a great idea on a slate like this in the largest contest. Again, large, large uh, GPPs only, 1% to 2% ownership. I mean, honestly, the same goes for Christian Watson, Alan Lazard as well. If they catch a touchdown and they're the only touchdown scorer in the game, or they actually go off, which is all, both of these possibilities are likely, or if not possible, uh, then they can be optimal. Again, smaller contests, we want to stick to Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Mayfield, and then get different in one spot. It's the larger contest where we have to get different in multiple spots, whether it's via the lineup construction or the players that we choose for the captain spot. So lots to think about for tonight. It's going to be a boring game more than likely, but those always make for interesting showdown slates. That's why showdown is one of the most interesting formats. Make sure you check out, after you watch this video, our daily plug, OccupyFantasy.com. Our writer, Bismo, does a great job on Mondays and Thursdays. Talks about overall slate notes, advanced metrics, rankings for low-risk and high-risk contests, lineup construction tips that are way more in-depth than I go in this video uh, for, for the showdown slate. So make sure to check that out. That link's in the description. Post it 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern for the most part. So look at, for that later today. Occupy model, you've seen that on screen. That updates through lock, rankings, projected ownership, and our lineup builder, which I use uh, religiously to get different lineup ideas to build my 150, uh, build up to 300 lineups, actually, with optimal lineup criteria, various rules. Everything you need to crush showdown slates, OccupyFantasy.com. So that'll do it for this video. Appreciate you staying till the end and watching. Again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you are already. Just click that subscribe button below. Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. Let's us know to continue to make this content. Helps others on YouTube find the content. Uh, and any questions, I'll monitor the YouTube channel throughout the day. Throw your comments below. Throw your ideas below. Any questions about Showdown, uh, comment below the video. I'll get back to you. If you want in-depth discussions, if you want to chat with us, other members of the community, sweat the games with us, join our Discord server, occupyfantasy.com slash Discord. All the links you need are in the description below. So Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy, thank you for listening, and good luck in tonight's Packers and Rams showdown slate.